Welcome to the course, Formal Language and Automata Theory. In this lecture, we will discuss about context-free grammars, which is type two grammar. So till now we discussed about type three language, that is regular language. Then type two, type three grammar, that is regular grammar then type three acceptor, that is finite automata. As for Chomsky hierarchy, the formal languages are classified into four types and are denoted as type zero, type one, type two, type three. So here we are studying all the four types in reverse order. That is computational power in increasing order. First, we discussed about type three which consisting of less computational power than all other three types. Now we will see next highest computational power category that is type two. So that type two language is called as context free language. Then its grammar is called as context free grammar. Then its acceptor is called as push down automata. So these three topics related to type two, we will discuss in unit three and unit four. So in this year, we'll discuss about introduction to context-free grammars, definition of context-free grammars, derivations using grammar, then types of derivations, that is the leftmost and rightmost derivation, then language of a grammar, sentence still forms. So all these topics we will cover in this lecture. Next lecture, we will continue with the remaining topics like parse trees, applications of context-free grammars, ambiguity in grammars and languages. Later, we will discuss about its acceptor that is a push down automata. Now, let us see the outline or agenda of today's lecture. Introduction to context-free grammars. First, we will see the definition of a context-free grammar. Then what is a derivation? How to define a derivation using context-free grammar? Then types of derivations. There are two types of derivations, leftmost and rightmost derivations. Then how to find language of a context-free grammar? Then what is a sentential form? What are various types of sentential form? So these topics we are going to cover here. Now, let us see definition of context-free grammar. We already know the definition of a grammar, a formal grammar or a grammar, which is defined as a portable, that is G equal to VTSP. So any grammar, the formal definition is same. The only difference is grammar to grammar, only the production rules are changed. So remaining all tuples are same. Here also a context-free grammar also abbreviated as CFG, denoted by G is a four tuple. That is G equal to V, T, S, P. Except production rules, all tuples are same as in formal grammar or regular grammar. Where V is set of variables, also called as non-terminals whereas T is set of terminal symbol. Whereas S is start variable, which is belongs to the variables V, where P is set of productions. So all tuples are same. Now let us see the rules of productions in context free grammar. What are the rules? The production rules are of the form A derives alpha, productions P, is a mapping function which maps from A to alpha, where left hand side of the arrow, you can see we have only one variable that is capital A, whereas right hand side of the arrow, we have alpha. Now what is A, what is alpha? Here C, where A is a single variable or non-terminal, where A belongs to the set V, variable set of variables. So left hand side of any context free grammar, it contains only a single variable, that is the restriction. Whereas alpha, the right hand side of the production, alpha is a string of grammar symbols. 
from variables and terminals which includes null also that is epsilon or lambda that is defined as alpha belongs to v union t whole closure that is star closure means which which includes null also so in normal definition of a formal grammar alpha is same i mean right hand side is same that is v unity whole closure whereas left hand side in normal grammar we have taken v unity positive closure v unity positive closure so left hand side it does not includes null this is a normal grammar production rules but whereas in context free grammar left hand side contains a single variable right hand side variable or terminal or combination of variable terminals including null so that is the difference between normal grammar and this context free grammar again you can see regular grammar also you can recall once regular grammar so regular grammar productions are so a derives b c or a derives c see left hand side also it contains single variable right hand side a variable followed by a terminal or a single terminal so this can also be written as a derives terminal followed by variable so based on this we can say right linear grammar left linear grammar so whereas context free grammar there is no restriction in the right hand side right hand side it contains any string of symbols from variables and terminals including null but left hand side same restriction as in regular grammar now let us see some examples first example 1 so the production is like this a derives terminal a or terminal a followed by variable a so in this production you can define where v variables variables are only one variable upper case letter so a then terminals are we have only one single terminal that is lower case letter a small a now it is a context free grammar how can you say it is a context free grammar as per context free grammar condition left hand side it contains a single variable it satisfies right hand side either a string of terminals with terminals and variables so here we have a single terminal here terminal followed by variable including null also but here null is not there so v union t whole closure any condition is satisfied either a variable or a terminal or string of variables and terminals including null but it satisfies the condition of a single terminal is there terminal followed by variable so this is string string of terminal and variables so this production satisfy the rules of context free grammar therefore this is a context free grammar let us see another example a grammar to recognize if statement in our computer programming languages how to define if condition so that can be described by using context free grammar also so the definition is first s derives i c t s or i c t s e s or a where s yes is nothing but statement so now in the right hand side you can see so what we have small i small i is if keyword then small t is then keyword then small e is else keyword and small a small b or uh, expression values now here c derives b where c is a condition so b is expression value now in our programming languages if condition how to define if condition then statement else condition then statement true part and false part we have two parts so same thing can be represented using context free grammar using this definition now in this grammar the variables are all upper case letters we have capital s capital c here also capital c therefore variables are s and c now terminals are all lower case letters what are the lower case letters small i small t small e small a small b so these are all called as terminals so 
check whether this is a context free grammar or not left hand side you can see it has a single variable so any variable but it contains only single variable any value of the variable right hand side either a single terminal or a single variable or string of variables and terminals here see i c t s terminal variable terminal variable string of terminals and variables here also terminal variable terminal variable terminal variable string of terminals and variables here single terminal so even sometimes null also allowed so therefore this product all this production satisfying the conditions of context free grammar so this is a context free grammar now let us see another example palindromes string a context free grammar for palindromes is represented by g equal to here the first set is called as variable v v that is s yes. then second set is called as t now t equal to 0 comma 1 then s yes, p so v t s yes, p the order we have to follow so here variables are s yes, only s yes is given terminals are 0 1 starting variable is s yes itself now productions where p represents set of productions are given below the first production s yes derives null epsilon or lambda second production s yes derives terminal 0 here 0 is the digit which is a terminal now third production s yes derives 1 this is also a digit so which is a terminal now fourth production s yes derives 0 p 0 here 0 is terminal p is variable again 0 is terminal next production s yes derives 1 p 1 so one is terminal p is variable then one is again terminal so whenever you can derive something from this grammar always it derives palindrome string so now the restriction of cfg conditions left hand side you can see all productions started with a single variable yes same variable or different variable but single variable should be occurred in any context free grammar right hand side you can see either null or a terminal or string of terminals and variables so it satisfies the condition of v union t whole closure therefore this is again a context free grammar now another example you can see a context free grammar for simple arithmetic expressions like a calculator represented by g equal to e comma i so this set is called as v variables then t uh, v t terminals then this is called as s e is the start variable now p is nothing but set of productions where terminals are given below terminals are three this is simple express means with consisting of digits letters arithmetic operators parentheses etc now plus is arithmetic addition star is arithmetic multiplication then this is open parentheses closure parentheses then lowercase letter a b or terminals then digits 0 1 also terminals so these are all terminals combination of all these terminals the productions are given below table now the first production e derives i e derives where e stands for expression then i stands for value of that expression so wherever uppercase letters those are all variables now e defined as e derives e plus e this is arithmetic addition expression plus expression then e derives e into e expression into expression multiplication then e derives e within parentheses some values within parentheses then i the i values are either terminal a or terminal b or i followed by terminal a i followed by terminal b then i followed by digit 0 then i followed by digit 1 so these are all the various productions of the given grammar so this grammar is also a context free grammar the reason left hand side it contains only single variable right hand side it contains a single terminal or a single variable or variable followed by terminals the string of terminals and variables or variables and terminals so even null also allowed but in this null is not there null is not mandatory that is also allowed so therefore this is again a context free grammar so this grammar frequently we will use for our problems this 
simple expression grammar so that's all about uh, our definition of a context free grammar and uh, various examples now we will move to next concept derivations using a grammar so first of all what is a derivation how to find a derivation using our context free grammar so coming to the definition of a derivation the process of deriving strings of terminals and or non terminals also called as variables from the start variable that is yes in the grammar g equal to vt sp where s is start variable how to derive strings of terminals and or non terminals from start variable by applying some set of productions by applying means by substituting some set of productions from p p is called a set of production e is called a derivation a derivation is denoted by the symbol unidirectional double arrow this we will call it as derives so this is the definition of a derivation so now from the given grammar from the starting variable we can derive string of terminals or non terminals or combination of both terminals and non terminals using start variable from the productions by substituting set of productions that is called as derivation derivation is denoted by unidirectional arrow so now see how to de uh, define a derivation formally let us see a context free grammar g equal to vtsv is a context free grammar let a string alpha b beta be a string of terminals and variables here in this b is a variable here b is a variable whereas alpha and beta are strings in v union t whole closure includes null whereas b is in single variable from the set v now let us take the productions a derives alpha b beta is a production and b derives gamma is another production so these two are productions in the context free grammar g so now we have to obtain the string alpha gamma beta how to obtain this string our original string is alpha b beta now b contains a production by substituting b value in this string now b is replaced by gamma then you will get alpha gamma beta so can be obtained from the start variable productions so here the start variable is the by default first production is start variable so a derives alpha b beta now take uh, a derives alpha b beta in place of b in the right hand side of the production substitute b derives gamma right hand side value gamma so then you can obtain alpha gamma beta so can be obtained from start variable productions that is a productions as shown below so you can take the derivation like this a derives so in normal production also we will read it as derives only but derivation will add double line unidirectional arrow so now a derives first you can take the starting variable production what is the production alpha b beta so a derives alpha b beta sometimes it is also called as equal a equal to alpha b beta so now wherever substitution is there so in place of variable b so there is substitution what b contains b derives gamma that value you can substitute here so now in bracket you can write down what is the substitution we used here we used b derives gamma so left hand side variable is replaced by right hand side value so therefore b is replaced by gamma now this is called as a derivation here you can see this is the derivation symbol so below the derivation symbol you can use the grammar name g is the grammar so every step you can write on top you can use so whether one step or two step derivation that means only one substitution used or more than one substitution used some notations are there that we will see so this is called as derivation here who derived a string alpha gamma beta from the starting variable a by substituting the productions from the grammar so this is called as derivation now here you can see so 
we may extend the derivation so this relationship to represent zero one or many derivation steps so zero steps we did not apply any substitution one step we applied only one substitution then many derivations we applied more than one substitution so for these we will use some notations we use asterisk or star to denote zero or more steps are used to derive a string so and is denoted by so the arrow symbol bottom we can use the asterisk or sometimes we can use on top also then we use plus to denote minimum one one step derivation or more steps and is denoted by with a positive closure that is plus if a string is obtained by applying only one step then it is called as one step derivation and it is denoted by normal derivation symbol so if we applied minimum one and more than one we can use plus then zero or more steps then we can use asterisk only one step you can use simply the arrow without any asterisk and positive closure so these are all the notations we will use now let us see one example so same example whatever the example we discuss that can be expanded with more substitution so we have a production a derives alpha b beta and b derives gamma 1 or gamma 2 or gamma 3 and so on gamma n are the productions in context free grammar g equal to vt sp now by default the first production left hand side variable whatever that is called a starting variable so now the derivation can be obtained by taking the starting variable production only therefore first we can take starting variable a derives alpha b beta so now in the right hand side we have only the variable 1 b so b contains some productions so you can substitute all these productions one by one see how to substitute so here multiple productions are there for b so that number of times b productions are substituted now this can be written as a derives alpha so first b value is gamma 1 so alpha gamma 1 beta or so only one substitution is allowed at a time second substitution is alpha second b value is gamma 2 so gamma 2 beta then third b, b value is gamma 3 so alpha gamma 3 b beta then fourth value is gamma 4 so then and so on n value so gamma n here you can see alpha beta are fixed for each and every substitution only the varying value is b value why because b contains gamma 1 to n production so n times you can apply the substitution only one substitution you have to apply so here we used uh, how many substitutions we used so we used even zero also zero or more substitutions are allowed here so this is called as derivation here what are the strings you derived alpha gamma 1 beta 1 string alpha gamma 2 beta is another string alpha gamma 3 beta is another string and so on alpha gamma n beta these are the strings derived from the given grammar so this is one example see another example so this is another uh, important uh, grammar uh, arithmetic expression so we saw one of the examples simple expression grammar similar to that this arithmetic expression here it contains more arithmetic operations so it contains addition that is place subtraction minus then multiplication star then division divide symbol then uh, id here id is a terminal this will call it as a bold face uh, string of terminal but this can be treated as a single terminal id we can't treat id separately so this is the special type of terminal we will call it as bold face string string of terminal so this is denoted by id or sometimes id1 id2 and so on so you can consider this a single terminal this one wherever this will occur now we have to obtain the string id plus id into id using the derivation so we have to derive this string from the given grammar 
here you can see the given grammar left hand side it contains single variable same variable it contains so therefore e is called as a starting variable you can take any production but which production we need to take based on the string so needs to be derived for that which production is useful for that only you have to take what it contains first plus combination then into so here plus into combination we have only the first production and third production so those only you can take you can start with first production or third production anyone you can take first by taking first production you can see by taking third also i will explain here so first take e derives e plus e here what you have to do to derive the output string id plus id into id so in place of variable in the right hand side you can substitute one substitution at a time so the string must start with id so left hand side variable e that should be replaced by id only so directly we have id substitution for e so you can substitute id here now this will become id plus e in bracket you can write down what what is the substitution we used in place of e what you substitute id that substitution you can mention within uh, square brackets in each and every step of derivation now you can see id is derived id plus plus already there next third symbol again what you want id but directly you can't substitute in place of id why because again if you can substitute e by id further we can't expand a terminal only variables are expanded so now you can substitute the remaining part is into so into production so in place of e we have e into e so that is third production e derives e into e this you can substitute here so this is the substitution we used e derives e into e now here in place of variable now you can substitute id directly so now what is the next symbol we want after plus we want id so therefore in place of here underlined e you can substitute id so that substitution of production listed here so now id plus id into that is already there as the now last one what you want again you want id so for e directly we have id substitution so that underlined variable e you can substitute id so now you will get id plus id into id see this is our required string so required string so this is called as derivation so here you can mention here we used zero or more productions are used so use asterisk then bottom you can mention the grammar name also g so it is not mandatory if you want you can mention so this is called as derivation so same derivation by taking third production at starting now e derives here i will take e into e now you can see now here first what you want here into e is there but uh, before into what you want plus so leftmost e you can substitute it by plus so that is e derives here what is the substitution used e derives e plus e that is first production is used in place of e this is substituted now this is in the form of e plus e into e that means you can substitute id in place of e id plus id into id directly you will get but only one step we have to apply each and every step of derivation first leftmost e you can substitute it as uh, id so id plus e into e here what is the substitution we used e derives id so next e you can substitute again id now id plus id into e now remaining e is also there so now that also you can substitute by id now this will becomes id plus id into id now here what is the substitution we used e derives id now you can see our string is derived id plus id into id so in both cases by taking the first expression or third expression so we derived our required same string so this is called as derivation now we have various uh, types of derivations so the first type is called as leftmost derivation so it is abbreviated as lmd it is nothing but leftmost derivation so how to define leftmost derivation the process of obtaining a string of terminals from a sequence of replacements such that only leftmost non terminal or variable 
he is replaced at each and every step of the derivation he is called leftmost derivation here you can see leftmost derivation is nothing but same as the derivation only the process of uh, deriving a string uh, in our previous example whatever the method we followed same process but each and every step so only leftmost non terminal or variable p is replaced at each and every step he is called as leftmost derivation in our previous example we replaced uh, sometimes leftmost variable we replaced some sometimes rightmost variable we replaced but every step uh, only leftmost variable is replaced that is called as leftmost derivation whereas uh, another type we have rightmost derivation also so the rightmost derivation is nothing but each and every step of derivation so we have to replace the rightmost variable then that is called as rightmost derivation see the definition the process of obtaining a string of terminals from a sequence of replacements such that only rightmost non terminal or variable is replaced at each and every step he is called as rightmost derivation so each and every step if you can replace a rightmost variable then that is called as rightmost derivation in each and every step of derivation so every time we can replace leftmost variable then that is called as leftmost derivation now we will see the same example now we will discuss in terms of leftmost derivation and rightmost derivation this is one important question in examination so you will get uh, this type of questions for the given context free grammar find uh, leftmost derivation and rightmost derivation for the given string so like that uh, questions will be given so now the question is consider the given context free grammar for arithmetic expression same previous example so e derives e plus e e derives e minus e e derives e into e e derives e by e then e derives id now obtain the string same string what we discussed in our earlier example so id plus id into id using leftmost and rightmost derivation already we have done one derivation so in the similar fashion you can do but each and every step we can replace leftmost variable and each and every step you can replace rightmost variable then those derivations are called as leftmost and rightmost but uh, you can't apply both uh, leftmost and rightmost in one derivation in any one derivation every time you can replace only leftmost variable leftmost to right side left to right whereas rightmost derivation or uh, right to left side variable replacement so in one derivation we can't apply both so you can use either leftmost or rightmost at a time now see the solution first uh, see the leftmost derivation here also same you can take either first production or third production no issues but finally our uh, required string needs to be derived so now leftmost derivation here first so we have taken uh, first production e derives e plus e so the leftmost derivation you can replace uh, we can denote by suffix lm for our uh, understanding leftmost derivation so e e derives e plus e here you can see we have two variables so this is variable 1 variable 2 in case of leftmost derivation what is the definition each and every step of the derivation leftmost variable is replaced first so here two variables are there first leftmost variable left side variable you need to replace so here that is underlined here so now uh, in place of e what you need to substitute our string is here id plus id into id so our string must start with id leftmost so leftmost what we have e plus e form so first e is replaced by id so this is replaced by id now the substitution used here e derives id now id plus e here you can see only one variable so either leftmost or rightmost if we have single variable directly you can substitute no issue if more than one variable occurred in any derivation always you can replace from left to right so in leftmost derivation now you can see here we have e so uh, uh, id plus after plus what we want id but directly we can't take in place of e as id we have the expression into so that into production you can take now e derives e is replaced by e into e so that is substituted here e into e again you can see here two variables are there here don't substitute rightmost e first substitute leftmost e here so that e is underlined here this you can substitute first what you need to substitute here 
id plus after plus what you want id so e derives id now e derives id is substituted then we have only one variable either leftmost or rightmost if single variable is there you can substitute directly if in case of more than one variable then only you can follow left to right in case of leftmost derivation now here g derives what you want now we got id plus id into the last one is id so in place of v substitute id now e derives id now you can say this is our required string derived using leftmost derivation each and every step we substituted uh, the variables from left to right similarly for rightmost derivation you can see same process right to left variable substitution so rightmost derivation you can denote rm so under the derivation arrow so now e derives e plus e now two variables are there first you can substitute rightmost variable so rightmost after plus what you want see after plus we want into so rightmost e is replaced by into expression so that is e derives e into e now that is substituted here now you can see three variables are there in this step rightmost variable first we can replace so that is e underlined so that e is replaced by id so now right to left we are deriving this thing now after substituting e by id what you will get e plus e into id now id into before into so what you want id so now here again two variables are there so rightmost variable is e so this we can substitute by id now e derives id now you will get uh, e plus id into id now what we got here uh, plus id into id we got now what we want before plus only id is required now here you have only one variable so here uh, directly you can substitute the required value that is id now here we got id plus id into id see so we got the required string now here you can observe either leftmost derivation leftmost derivation we got the same thing rightmost derivation also we got the same thing so no problem based on the concept for deriving either leftmost or rightmost derivation if you will derive same string so that grammar is called as ambiguous grammar that we will discuss later that is our next topic now let us see another example so this example also you can make it as practice also so a context free grammar for simple expression represented by g equal to this is v variables e comma i now terminals t s c is e now p productions where t equal to plus into open brace closed brace then terminal a b then digits 0 1 these are all the terminals the productions are this, this example we already uh, seen in the context free grammar examples so these are all the productions now we have to derive the string using leftmost and rightmost derivation in the similar fashion we can practice this problem so the string is open brace a101 plus b1 closed brace then asterisk again open brace a1 plus b closed brace so you need to derive this string so first leftmost derivation you can take uh, any production then apply left to right uh, variable replacement till uh, deriving the required string Whereas rightmost derivation, take any suitable production, start substituting right to left variables each and every step. So in brackets, each and every step, you can write down what is the production we use. Here, I have provided solution also. You can practice it. So if you have any queries, so you can um, post the queries, I will clarify. So the solution is already provided. So step by step, uh, you can see how the substitution is used leftmost derivation finally you need to derive uh, the required uh, string similarly for a uh, rightmost derivation also so you can practice it so like that you have to practice more problems so that is called as leftmost and rightmost derivation then coming to next concept the language of a grammar so now we discussed about what is a context free grammar then how to define it what are the various examples then what is a derivation then various types of derivations that is leftmost and rightmost derivations so now how to define a language of a context free grammar here whatever the language we can define for a context free grammar that is called as context free language that is type 2 language so how this can be defined first let us see a grammar 
G equal to VTSP is a context free grammar. The language of G is denoted by L of G is the set of terminal string. The language is combination of set of terminal strings that have derivations from the start symbol. That is, so the language is defined by L of G equal to W. W is a string in strings of terminals that is T closer such that, so this W can be derived from the starting variable. Starting variable is yes. Yes derives W. Here we used asterisk G. Asterisk means zero or more uh, productions are used or steps are used. Then G, G is the given context free grammar. So from this, you can derive a W. This is called as a long way. So if a language L is the language of some context free grammar, then L is said to be a context free language or CFL, so which is type two language of Chomsky hierarchy. So a language is nothing but a string of terminals. So that have derivations from the start symbol. So this is the definition of a language. So how to define a language or a context free language means, so this is the definition from context free grammar. Now let us see one example. A context free grammar for the palindrome is represented by G equal to S, that is a variable V, then zero comma one are terminals, then S P. Then P is represents the set of productions are given below. So S derives epsilon, S derives terminal zero, S derives terminal one, S derives zero, P zero. That is terminal variable terminal. Then S derives terminal one, variable P, terminal one. This is palindrome context free grammar. This example also we discussed earlier. Now from this, so how to define the context free language? The grammar shown above defined the language of palindromes over the alphabet zero comma one. Thus, the set of palindromes is a context free language or CFL. So like that we have to define. Then coming to next concept, sentential form. So what is a sentential form? This sentential form is somewhat similar to derivation, but see how to define this one. Let G equal to VTSP be a context free grammar. Any string W in V unity whole closure, which is derivable from the start symbol S yes, such that S yes derives under asterisk W is called a sentence or sentential form of G. So which is called as derivation, same as derivation. Here also from start symbol S, yes, we have to derive a string W, but where that string can be derived, the string can be derived from variables or terminals or a string of variables and terminals including null. So that is called as sentence or sentential form. Now in our derivation, each step, whatever the substitution we applied, that is also called as a sentence. So then each step we have sentence or sentential form. Here also we have two types of uh, sentential forms, same as uh, leftmost and rightmost derivations. Before that, so let us see example of sentential form. So consider the grammar for expression, same grammar. So now E derives E plus E. Here you can see, we used again the derivation concept. Leftmost E, now we substituted ID. ID plus E, now E derives ID, this is the substitution. Then ID plus, now next E is replaced by E into E. That is E derives E into E. So then again, leftmost E, we substituted ID. So now, here E derives ID. Now, next we have one more E that is also substituted by ID. Now we will get ID plus ID into ID. Here you can see we applied here leftmost derivation. Each and every step uh, leftmost variable is substituted. Now you can see here we are talking about sentential form. From this derivation, how to define a sentential form? The final string of terminals that is ID plus ID into ID is called a sentence or sentential form of the grammar. So this is called as a sentence or sentential form. Then each and every step also. Suppose if you will stop here, this is called as sentence or sentential form. If you will stop here, this is called as sentence or sentential form. If you will stop here, this will call it a sentence or sentential form. 
like that at the end of the derivation the last one we will call it as the final sentence or sentential form of the grammar here also we have two types of sentential forms so one is left sentential form so another one is right sentential form a sentence that can be derived using leftmost derivation is called as left sentential form so a string that can be obtained by rightmost derivation is called as right sentential form so now previous example here we used leftmost derivation so here whatever the sentence we obtained that is called as left sentential form then uh, by using rightmost derivation so whatever the sentence we will obtain that is called as right sentential form again same example you can recall so here you can see what is the derivation here we used leftmost derivation so using leftmost derivation so here we derived the final string id plus id into id so the final string of terminals that is id plus id into id is called as left sentential form of the grammar similarly rightmost derivation now here you can see here two variables rightmost variable is substituted here three variables rightmost variable is substituted so now this is called as rightmost derivation so here you can see the final string id plus id into id the final string of terminals id plus id into id is obtained by using rightmost derivation so which is called as right sentential form of the grammar so these are all the two types of sentential forms left uh, sentential form and right sentential form so now we stop here then uh, see the conclusion so what we discussed in this lecture first we discussed about uh, definition of context free grammar followed by examples then uh, derivations using a grammar followed by examples then two types of derivations we discussed that is leftmost and rightmost derivation followed by examples then the language of a grammar how this can be defined that language is called as context free language from the grammar g then finally we discussed about uh, sentential forms here we have left uh, sentential form and uh, right uh, sentential forms so these can be obtained uh, from leftmost derivation and uh, rightmost derivation so next class we will come up with uh, remaining topics so till then goodbye happy learning